This video is sponsored by Skillshare. I've never played Dungeons & Dragons before, but I've always really wanted to. The idea of being transported to a fantastical world and being able to have that creative freedom to dictate your own adventure sounds like a good time to me. I just never grew up with folks that know how to play the game, so I just played other games instead. Nowadays, cooking is my creative outlet, but there's no reason we still can't add a D&D twist to it. Let's make this culinary fantasy into reality with Dungeons & Dragons Heroes Feast, the official D&D cookbook. Dungeons & Dragons Heroes Feast, the official D&D cookbook by Kyle Newman, John Peterson, and Michael Whitwer, takes us into the world of D&D with a look through many culinary creations in its fictional universe. The 80 recipes in this cookbook draw inspiration from the notable dishes, ingredients, and recipes mentioned in the D&D books. The core campaign worlds that inspired the food in this cookbook include Forgotten Realms, Greyhawk, Eberron, and Dragonlance with mention of other smaller worlds and locations. The authors of this cookbook are the same folks that worked on the Dungeons & Dragons Art & Arcana book, which is a visual history of Dungeons & Dragons, so I'm sure they've taken a lot of their experience with D&D lore and have applied it to the description sections of this cookbook. Even though I haven't played any of the D&D games, I still like the flavor text for the recipes as they give some good insights into the world and made me curious about the different cultures and locales. The food photos are really well staged with that medieval high fantasy look and feel and there are plenty of cool little props used that help set the stage and tell a story. There are a few recipes though that for some reason show an environmental photo rather than the food itself which is kind of weird and in my opinion a wasted opportunity to show the food but fortunately that only happens very few times. My favorite visuals in the cookbook though are the transition pages. The book is divided into main chapters that represent the most common races in D&D and the chapter titles are these gorgeous full spread illustrations. I love all the artwork in this cookbook. There are even these full spread fictional menus that are super interesting to read. It feels like you're in the D&D tavern and it's fun to imagine how these menu items look and taste like. The recipe structure of the dishes are pretty straightforward, it's just the ingredients list and recipe steps. Unlike most of my other cookbooks, the recipes here don't offer any additional details such as recipe difficulty, prep and cook time, serving size, or dietary details, so you're gonna have to give each recipe a closer read and make that guess for yourself. In terms of difficulty, I think this cookbook is more on the intermediate side. The food look really good, but that also means they look a little bit more laborious. So if you're new to cooking, then a lot of these recipes might look intimidating. I would probably recommend something else for beginner cooks, but if you're up for the challenge and you want to make something truly worthy of a hero's feast, then this is for you. All right, let's roll the dice and test our luck with these dishes and go on a cooking adventure with this three course D&D inspired meal. But first I want to talk about the video sponsor, Skillshare. I'm sure you've already heard by now of the many design, production, writing, and web development classes that Skillshare offers, but did you know that you can also learn about cooking? I was so bummed when my dough didn't rise for the Star Wars cookbook video, so I started taking Julia Tertian's class on easy and versatile baking. It was super easy to use and it was great to follow along as I learn and practice at the same time. And what do you know, my dough actually rose this time. What's really cool is that you can also see the end result of what the other folks in the community have shared. Some people were experimenting with their own flavor and that inspired me to make my own mango passion fruit twist to my jam buns. So if you want to learn new skills or master old ones, give Skillshare a try. The first 1,000 of my viewers to sign up through my link in the description will get a one month free trial of Skillshare so you can start exploring your creativity today. Back to cooking. The first recipe I want to try is the Ved Bread, a savory dinner bread that was popularized in Karnath that features mushrooms and Ved cheese. We're gonna start off by making the filling. In a food processor, put in around 12 ounces of roughly chopped up cremini mushrooms and pulse that for about eight one second pulses until the mushrooms are fine. Now in a skillet, melt two tablespoons of unsalted butter over medium heat, add two finely chopped shallots and cook those for about two minutes until soft. Then add in the mushrooms along with a quarter teaspoon of salt, Raise the heat to medium high and cook until you cook off the water from the mushrooms. About 9 to 12 minutes according to the cookbook, but I don't think my mushrooms were that liquidy so I stopped at 5. After that, add in a teaspoon of finely chopped fresh thyme and cool that for about a minute until fragrant. 
Then remove it from the heat and add in a quarter cup of grated Parmesan and mix it all together. Add some salt and pepper to taste, then spread it on a plate and just let it cool down to room temp. Time for the dough. In a large bowl, mix together two and a quarter cups of all-purpose flour with one tablespoon of baking powder, a teaspoon of sugar, and half a teaspoon of salt. Once mixed, add in about six ounces of grated Gruyere cheese and combine. In a separate bowl, whisk together three quarter cup of cold buttermilk along with six tablespoons of unsalted butter that's been melted and cooled. Then add this wet mixture into the dry mixture and combine everything until you get a sticky, chunky dough. On a floured surface, start kneading your dough until it holds together and is mostly smooth, but don't over knead it. That skill share that I took definitely came in handy for this recipe. Roll it out and try your best to flatten it to a roughly 12 by 18 inch rectangle. Then spread the mushroom filling as evenly as possible over the dough. Roll the dough tightly and evenly, and then cut the roll into about an inch and a quarter thick pieces. Line them up on a parchment paper lined baking sheet about two inches apart. Lastly, in a small bowl, beat an egg with a teaspoon of water to make an egg wash. Brush that over all the sides of the buns and then bake those in the oven at 425 degrees Fahrenheit for about 18 minutes according to the cookbook. Mine actually took a bit longer to brown, so I did mine for 25. Serve your buns warm or at room temp. The cookbook also suggests an optional brushing of truffle oil if you have, and you're ready to enjoy your fresh baked bread bread. Now we travel to the Dwarven Forges to try some of their smoked sausages and kraut with Dwarven Mustard. According to the cookbook, this recipe is forged and handed down by the Dwarf Father God Moradin himself. I don't know who that is, but he sounds badass. In a large pot, warm three tablespoons of vegetable oil over medium-low heat, then add in one finely chopped yellow onion. The cookbook said to cook that for about 15 minutes until caramelized. I'm not used to caramelizing onions, so even though it smells nice and caramelizy, I'm pretty sure I burnt these. But I'm not gonna let these burnt onions just go to waste, so we're pushing through. Add the cubed pieces of one large apple, a teaspoon of sugar, four cups of drained and squeezed sauerkraut, one and a half cups of water, half a teaspoon of salt, and a few grinds of pepper. You can also add an optional teaspoon of juniper berries, but I couldn't find any, so I left it out. Cover this up and cook for 25 to 35 minutes until the apple is soft. While we're waiting on that, take a saucepan and heat up two cups of dark beer and bring that to a simmer. Then add in six smoked sausages such as kielbasas or bratwursts. Poke some holes with a fork and warm those through for about 5 to 10 minutes. To make the dwarven mustard, combine together in a small bowl half a cup of stone ground mustard and a quarter cup of sour cream. Now let's plate it by placing a bed of that sauerkraut mixture on a plate, place the sausages on top, and if you want, you can spoon some of the warm beer over it, serve it with a dwarven mustard, and you're ready for your hearty dwarven meal. For the end of our meal, we travel to the land of the elves to try a dessert appropriately named Meal's End. According to the cookbook, elves are not known for their desserts, but they like this because it's quick and easy. In a bowl, mix three cups of chopped berries with some sugar to taste. I use two cups of roughly chopped strawberries and one cup of blackberries, but the book also suggests you can use blueberries or even cubed persimmons. I think raspberries would also work really well here. Now with a stand mixer and a whisk attachment, beat one and one third cups of heavy cream on high speed for about one and a half minutes until it's softly whipped and add a tablespoon of sugar once it's thickened. Then add in one third cup of Greek yogurt or creme fraiche and a quarter teaspoon of vanilla and fold those in gently. Then add in the chopped berries as well as two ounces of crumbled chocolate or vanilla meringues and fold those in as well. The cookbook says to eat this fast because the texture of the meringues will soften quick. I'm just going to add some more berries and meringues on top to make it look pretty and that's what we're having for the meal's end. Okay, let's eat all of this before the meringues get soggy. First with the bed bread, I love how these turned out. They look so cool and kind of mesmerizing when you look at it. And I love the idea of savory cinnamon rolls. The dough is nice and savory with a hint of saltiness from the cheese. The mushroom filling is great as well. Obviously it doesn't have that mushroomy pop because it's been pulsed to tiny pieces, but you still get that great umami earthy flavor. This would be perfect to eat with soups. Next time I would probably add more cheese to see what that's like, but overall this is a very nice piece of bread to accompany your meal. 
On to the smoked sausages and kraut. I've made sausages and sauerkraut before, but not to this level. But even the basic ones that I've had before, I really like. So I'm almost certain I'm going to like these. The sauerkraut was very good. I like the sweet and tart addition of the apples, and I like its soft texture. It goes very well with the cabbage. The sausages were great and juicy, but the beer flavor is really more pronounced in the sauerkraut because I think it sopped it all up when I sprinkled some on. Let's try it with the dwarven mustard. I've never thought about combining mustard with sour cream, but let me tell you, it works. The sour cream kind of mellows out the mustard a little bit and it just elevates the sauerkraut and sausages. It's even good with the bread too. Really good stuff. For dessert, I've been dying to try this meal's end. This dish is pretty much an English dessert called Eat and Mess, which I have been wanting to try for forever since I'm a sucker for meringues. And oh my goodness, it's just as heavenly as I imagined. The fluffy cream with the airy crunch of the meringues and the tartness of the berries is a legendary combination. I did notice that the meringues that I've mixed in got kind of soft, but good thing I sprinkled some extra on top. Next time I make this, I probably wouldn't mix the meringues in with the cream, I would just leave them on top so they don't lose their crunch. It would be really interesting to try other berries and other meringue flavors for this recipe, but this one in particular is a surefire taste bud pleaser. A truly great meal's end. Final verdict for the Dungeons & Dragons Heroes Feast. Dependable and delicious.